Okay, so I just want to insert something here. Um, so as you can see that, like, see all the off cuts, like all the material? Like I save all this, right? Scrap, because these are actually made from scrap. Like they're made from, you know, off cuts and strips from 10 thou, 15 thou, 20 thou sheet. Uh, these strips, you know, that's, there's the 10 thou by 60 thou, number 103. There's the angle, 60 thou angle, number 291. Um, but when I build these, you can see how I overrun the plastic, see? And the reason why I do that is for economy of, of uh, construction and motion, as I like to call it. Uh, I'm not going to cut each individual piece measure and then try to fit, you know. I mean, there are exceptions where I'll have to do that, you know, to fit that in there. But actually, the best way to do that is to just lay a piece on like here you can see right and then what i do is i just glued this end and then i just come in here like this lay the knife over top of the edge here as a guide and there you have it and then all i do is take a bit of thin solvent Good to go. When that dries, you just clean it up with the sanding block, and it'll all all the seams will go away. And you have a nice framed-in box there, a type of vent or whatever you want there. See, and as you can see, these vents are framed up in the same manner. Those two there, what one looks a little bit different because I moved the the rail down a bit, and it's thinner. Then there's this one here that's not framed, which is a little bit different. But you can see that they're all like they all started with with a piece of square stock, and then you actually just skin the outside of them, you know, like you saw how I did it earlier, and uh, that's how I build all these up. So now I've got, I mean, I got a few extras here I didn't do anything with there yet, but uh, now I have basically six types of vents. Uh, I think I require, was it one, well, there's a few other flush ones I'm going to cut into the panel here, but uh, these more boxy type should cover the warehouse flat here. Okay. Now, one other thing I want to add. Um, when you're at your local hobby store, like, look at other stuff other than model railroads uh, materials. Like photo etch, like even... I mean, depending on the scale, like these of all things are gunned down models. Like they're the Bandai, you know, I have no interest in their model kits personally, but I sure like their photo etch, which is this stuff here. See there? Those two sheets, they're vents, right? They're vent pieces for detailing those, you know, those big uh, robotic, you know, figures. So... You can see there are two different styles there. You can use these for kit bashing locomotives too, like these side vents. But in this case here, I can apply one there, see? So thanks for tuning in. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you very much to all the new subscribers that have come onto the channel. I really appreciate you. Your support uh, really helps the channel out a lot and uh, helps to you know, justify a lot of my time. I mean, I could just build and not film any of it, but I want to do it because I want to pay it forward to you know people that want to know or compare things or maybe 
and had some of their skill set already or maybe they just already know and just find it interesting but because I just want to share the experience of uh, traditional model making right and that's essentially what this is okay uh, I want to build models that'll last uh, not just uh, you know 10 months or or you know whatever right like the models that I usually build will last decades, like a lifetime. And uh, that's what I think. If you're going to put the time into a model and you want to hand it down, like this model would stand alone on a bookshelf too, right? Because of the design of it. Uh, the Glover Road models are like that. So that can be passed on. So why put all that time in and have it, if it's made of cardboard and paper, it's not going to last, right? Humidity will kill it in no time. This model here is built of a standard... Uh, of, of almost a commercial standard as I was trained in film and that's why I do it and that's why I share it because it doesn't take longer really it's just uh, acquiring the skill set through practice and then you can use it on your model railroad or your diorama too right so okay so thanks for tuning in we'll see you on the next one it should wrap things up for the build on this one and I'll soon be starting the extractor and then uh, we can talk about the river because this will be the major model behind the barge slip uh, apart from trees and that. And then uh, I'll be looking into here. I'll just come up here right now. Uh, this area here, uh, the river. And the reason why, um, you know, I didn't paint it yet. Excuse me one sec. Is because, you know, reaching in here would damage the barge slip, which is also not painted. Besides, I want you to see the barge slip and the brewery and that warehouse would be pretty simple skin that one down there is going to be a in-service warehouse but um the river there's no point in doing it until this kind of major construction is done and i'm almost there and little details on the track and right away i can get out right later but and then when i get this all done it'll all be white you'll be able to see all the whole build and then the next phase after that will be paint, right, again. Okay? So, once again, thank you. Thank you for all your support. Thank you to all my uh, original subscribers as well. I hope everything's going okay and you're doing all right and you're encouraged and inspired and enjoying uh, your hobby. Okay? Cheers.